everybody and welcome to Creativity Time. My name is Tatiana, I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator here in Australia and today I will be doing some Christmas card making using the Christmas Season stamp set. I love pine cones. I don't know what it is about them but pine cones and Christmas is a fabulous combination in my books so I thought it's time to pull this one out. So this was in the last year's I don't know what it was called, the holiday catalogue, uh, July to December, I think it was, but it came out in August. Um, anyhow, fantastic set, and there are coordinating dies, and because that one doesn't have a sentiment, I thought we could combine it. Sorry, I am a little tired today. I did get up for the 2 a.m. soccer game. <laughs> for those who are not watching the World Cup, Australia played somebody, <laughs> um, Denmark, and we won, thankfully, but I am tired, <laughs> I did get a few hour, more hours sleep, but anyway, so enough soccer, um, Christmas season stamp set, because it doesn't have any sentiments, I thought this festive, framed and festive would be fantastic to join together, so let's, um, let's stop looking at me, um, so I've got all these bits and bobs out, so the framed and festive, it does coordinate with the um, the ovals and stuff from flamed florets dies, but I won't be using them. Um, we'll definitely be using this. And I thought it, we would, should use, well, I want to use is this beautiful shape die. I think I love it and it fits the sentiments. I know I've already done that combination, so we might do Tis the season to be jolly. And then we can add in some fa -la, -la, la las in the background there too for a bit of visual texture. And of course, stamping some pine cones. So let's start with the pine cones. And what I love about this stamp set, it is two step. Um, so you stamp the outside and then you get more detail on the inside. And what we'll do is have some fun and add some gold to that. So I'm going to mount my stamps. I think we'll need three pine cones. Well, not think. My The vision in my head says three pine cones. So these ones will stamp in a, a brown color and then this kind of detail-y bit we will do in gold. Well, we'll do some gold um what's it called gilded leaf because it's been a while since i've done that and then my favorite leaves are these ones so this is the second part to that and let's stick to oh and then we'll want some holy uh, berries no holly leaves but we'll do holly berries i'm just going to mount everything onto my clear blocks Love that we can store our stamps that don't have to take up so much room and then you can just have the clear blocks for whenever you need them, which is a very good, efficient use of craft storage space because you know what? We all need to conserve that storage space and make sure we get the most out of it. Okay, perfect. So for the gilded leafing, we will need our heat tool. And we will need heat and stick powder. So here's the gilded leafing. It's a lot of fun to use, can be quite messy. So I do have a container. So this is the heat and stick. So it's basically like a heat embossing powder, but it stays tacky when you heat. Well, it becomes tacky when you heat it. I'm just trying to get my tub out. So I have this massive tub, which I use for the gilded leaf. And you see I've only got a little bit of scraps left, which we might try to use. Okay, and now mm -hmm. I'm going to get some basic white. And because I'm going to be using the mini stamp and cut and boss machine, which by the way, demonstrators can order a new color of it today um, in boho blue, which is a 2023 to 20, 25 new in color. 
it's very exciting because today, 1st of December, is pre-order day. And that is a joining offer item. So if you're a demonstrator, you can order it now, but only until the 4th of January. And then from the 5th of January, you can uh, you can order it in your starter kit, but only in your starter kit. There's no other way to get it. So, let me know. Maybe you'd like to join my team and get yourself a little mini stamp and cut emboss machine today. Um, so, I'm going to use soft suede for the pine cone. I'm just not sure if I want it full strength or stamped off. strength is pretty good let's see what it's yeah full strength so I'm going to stamp two of each because I don't know if I want two big ones or two little ones I know that I want three in total I'm just flipping them so that I can fit more on my sheet and let's do the gilded leafing first so I'm going to take the embossing clay and rub it all over so that it's not that issue. And now we want the other stamp, which is this one, and you're going to line it all up so that it's kind of sitting over the original as so, but I'm going to use Versamark ink. If you have not familiar with Versamark ink, it is a water marking ink, so it kind of enhances the color behind it, but it's also tacky and sticky, so you can put embossing powders on top, and our embossing powder will be the heat and stick, and so that'll allow the gilded leafing to stick. So it's a very fun thing to do. So I'm just going to stamp them all. It does take a little bit of time to dry. So you've got time to do a little bit of stamping. But I wouldn't walk away and do a dance or, you know, make a cup of tea at this point. I'd try to get that heat and stick powder onto it as soon as you can. And I am getting into a bad habit of just dipping my cardstock into embossing powders, which I couldn't get all of it in. So I'm gonna use the spoon now over the little one. There we go. So you can see the powder has stuck to where the Versamark ink is, and it's not sticking to the other parts, which is very handy for what we're about to do. I'm just tapping off any excess. You don't want to heat your heat and stick because otherwise it will become sticky and no longer any use to you. So now I'm going to watch the magic and it's going to turn clear so you're not going to be able to see um, too much but you can see that pine cone changing so you can you can see the white frosted look and now it's gone. You can't just leave it with the frosted look, you need to heat it, otherwise that powder can be wiped off super easy. Done. You don't want to overheat the heat and stick powder. And now, I'll show you a little bit with the full. So I'm going to take, I'm going to place that down there. So all you do is take the gilded leafing and you press it down into the heat and stick and press it down and don't worry about it covering everything because you're going to rub off the excess and this is where that tub comes in super duper handy is that for the excess to drop into I'm going to move that and then you can use your finger or a sponge dobbler. 
I often use my finger, but a sponge dobbler means that it's a little less messy on your finger. And so there we go. Probably should turn the pine cone around, but you can see we've got now a gold pine cone. So, and collect all the scraps. Don't throw them out because they still stick. It's a little bit messier, but they still stick to all that heat and stick to any anything sticky they will stick so don't throw that out don't waste it use it up see and a sponge job that works really well for rubbing that excess off I wanted to try this last Christmas with this but I never got around to it but I am so pleased I have Look at those pine cones, aren't they adorable? Oh, that's gonna be such a cute Christmas card. I have experimented and the gilded leafing doesn't work as well on sentiments, particularly with fine, thin lettering. Um, I mean, we could try, we might try actually, but I tried it with thinner stuff. I have not tried it with anything as thick as this. Well, this is thicky-ish. I did say tis the season, so that could work. Just, I'm finding bits of gilded leafing. Putting it into my top. Okay, let's um, continue stamping. We want some greenery. Now I cut my strip, oh, this is from A4. I cut it into three strips at seven centimeters because you can get three of them um, from a strip. And that is because it fits nicely into the mini stamp and cut emboss machine. And what color? What color? Should I go? Let's see. Let me know. Okay, so should I go garden green and shaded spruce for the leaves? Or something a little bit... Crazy and different, Bermuda Bay and Coastal Cabana. So give me a thumbs up if you would like the garden green and shaded spruce combo. That's a thumbs up. There's a few people watching, people leaving as well. Or give me a love heart if you would like the Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay option. Come on. I know you want to vote. Is my sound there? I'm just gonna check. That's gonna echo through. I think is I've lost, no, yes, there. no. My sound is there. Nobody's voting. There are people watching, but nobody's voting. Um, I'm tempted to use the Bermuda Bay and Coastal Cabana option. Garden Green, thank you, Donna. Garden Green and Shaders Spruce. I think that probably will work a lot better as much as I'm tempted with the other colors. So I'm just, I, thank you, Donna. I will just go ahead, except shall I stamp this off? Should I do it stamped off? Let's do both. Let's do a stamped off and a non-stamped off. Let's use both. That could be nice. Actually, ooh, I really like that. Isn't that pretty? And I'll need another strip. So I will do a stamp off. Again. you're pretty traditional I do like to explore with colors um, but I'm happy I think with the pine cones I think they need to be traditional it just will probably look a bit funny <laughs> so let's go with that okay so that was garden green that's our base color and then the detailing this is, remember is a two-step stamp extra detailing so this is where I need to just concentrate and line it all up but being photopolymer I can see and that's very faint but I can see it I don't know if the lighting is a little bit off today with rain coming soon but you can see even on the light one it's there it's visible I'm just not sure if the camera's fully picking it up but it is there, it's added some beautiful detailing and it's not hard to line up. You 
You just need to concentrate for a second. That's why I stopped talking. Well, that one I didn't do a perfect job of lighting up, but that's okay. So you can see it's a little bit of misalignment there. That one's good. And the other one's good. You just don't have to cut that one out. Fabulous. It gives extra detail. That's for sure. Actually, I'm going to keep that one out. Yep. I'm going to keep the shaded spruce out and stamp this in shaded spruce. This is for the holly berries. And I'm leaving some space for the berries. Actually, I can probably fit one. I don't know how many I'll need. So it's best to have a few extras there. And I am going to use my new favorite red, Sweet Sorbet. Now I can't remember which way these go. These do fit, haha, -ha, that way. Again, just take your time lining it up. But you can see that it sits nicely. And once you remember the orientation, it's not that difficult to repeat. How cute are they? Are you ready for Christmas? I am absolutely not. Actually, I need to order kids' Christmas presents. Otherwise, they might not get here on time. Yikes, really need to do that. Okay, dokie. Right, we need one more thing. While we're stamping, let's keep the stamping going. So I've grabbed another sheet, and I said that we'll try the gilded leafing with the sentiment. And I said, tis the season to be jolly. I have not used this enough. Actually, I haven't used it much at all. So my backing label is not attached, but that's okay. We can use that. Um, because I'll be die cutting this, I thought it'd be best to stamp first. Actually, let's make sure the die fits. Where did I put it? Okay, it has to be this way. So I need to stamp it sideways so that it, the die will fit. Embossing buddy. Got my hidden stick ready. I've got my verse mark. There. I didn't need the mat underneath because that's photopolymer. That's okay. So I'm not sure if this is going to work, but it's always nice to experiment. Particularly alive, why not? Throw caution into the wind. Let's heat that up. Need to overheat just make sure it's all shiny there and might use fresh gilded leafing for this I'm just gonna cover take leaves with gold and tap them on. Ooh, that's a big piece. So they're kind of squished in and folded there. And this jar will last you ages. Seriously, ages and ages and ages. That's a big 
there. And remember, you don't waste the bits that come off, so don't worry too much. Yeah, it's just not right for, it's a little bit there, but it doesn't work as well for, it's probably better to stick to the colored ink for this. So it's, it's there a bit, it could work. What do you think? Let me know. you read that tis the season to be jolly do you know what that can work like it's not the jolly the why isn't so can I stick some more to it I managed to stick a little bit more to it let's see if I can rub some extra bits in I like it it will match the pine cones beautifully. So bigger, bolder writing is good. Okay, so time for some die cutting. I'm gonna cut this in half, at 10 and a half centimeters, and then score 14.85. That's for my card base and then for the card front I'm going to go 13.85 by nine and a half that's the card front perfect and I've got some pre-cut basic whites we should have stamped on and need an envelope. Perfect. Okie dokie. Start by folding and burnishing that fold on the card base. Now I've shared this before many times, but um, at Christmas time when I was growing up, I have I had horizontal blinds on my windows and I'd like to hang my Christmas cards up there but then they're all hanging up sideways because of the fact that the fold is you know um where are my other pine cones no I had I had three pine cones where did they go um, anyway, so that's why as a card maker, I love making portrait mode cards with the fold at the top so that you can hang them on the horizontal blinds and not have looking them sideways or on a string. Um, my husband's grandparents, they used to hang a string across their dining, over their dining table and in their kitchen area. And have I gone crazy? Seriously. I cut three pine cones out. No, I cut four pine cones out. Two in each size. Oh dear. It wouldn't be my life without a missing something. Not that I'm proud of that fact. Did they fall? Aha! Uh -huh. Found one on the ground. It's one itty one. I wanted a third at least. Golly gosh. Are you kidding me, right? Messy crafting. Well, my concept is this here, and we'll stamp fa la 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 la. This here. And I guess we're only doing pine cones at the top. Let's put a light colored one. It needs to go behind the pine cones. I'm just 
so that can go like that and then something along the lines of this I love it wish I could put a pine cone on I suppose it doesn't really need it would have been nice okay I'm gonna slide that looking for the pine cones. Can't find them. Pool party. Let's move on. Pool party ink, pool party cardstock, and the fa -la, la 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 And make sure we're going to stamp that in the correct direction. Excellent. So fa la 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 Just all over. Uh, I'm going to stamp off first here and Now when you go off the edge with the stamped off but you want to use it again, you're going to have to re-ink and do it because otherwise the um, the edge kind of comes out. So there we go. We've got fa -la, la 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 in the background. And then we'll have Tis the Season to be Jolly. Which we'll put up on dimensionals and do that first. I'm going to put not too many dimensionals because... And I'm kind of bringing it in, not right to the edge, because I want to be able to tuck my different bits in behind. Actually, I should have not taken off. I think the pine cones. Pine cones need to go about there. So let's stick the pine cones down. Kind of like the way those two are. I'm just going to do this, pick them up together, add some glue together there. And we had that at the bottom. So I'm kind of assembling this in a funny way because I liked the way it was. That's stuck down. Now I can add glue to my holly berries. So, and I'm going to add the set. So actually we'll put the that set later. Gonna add some leaves, a glue to the leaves, and that was going to be tucked in behind the pine cones. So there's that. And do you know what? Don't be afraid. I use even my fingers sometimes. I'm gonna rip that off. It's not going to show up anyway, but it makes it easier to tuck in and nobody's you can't see that I've removed a leaf so it's all good and then that, like it behind the pine cone make the pine cone a bit of the feature Oop. so we could do put some berries there maybe I like to try to keep things in odd numbers on each side. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Yeah, I think that looks good there. Add the glue in, and that slips in quite nicely. So it's not too many berries visible. But there's that front, and then that will go onto there. And 
Let's just use liquid glue. I was thinking maybe onto dimensionals. Isn't that beautiful? I feel like I could do with some more greenery. Let me find. Nay, nay. Actually, I think that that works really well. I'll add that in. back to an odd number. And just that splash of red, that extra red is good. And we just need to stamp the card base and the envelope. And I'm just thinking, what shall we stamp it with? Let's do the foliage. Let's do the foliage. Where's the ink pads? Here they are. I'm going to do the stamp. Oh no, I'm going to do both. I'm going to do. Now I know I've said. So this is what I mean by stamping off at the edge and not using it. So I'm going to do the stamped off thing, but I'm going to do that. But look, if I stamp this now, you're going to get the two tones. So I'm going to have to stamp, stamp off, and then add that there beautiful and where's the there it is and that was so that's in garden green and then in the shaded spruce oh shouldn't have put it away doing this stamp off That's for the inside and let's do the same on the envelope. This is so adorable. Oh. So, so, so pleased and thrilled with this. Let's make sure I don't put the wrong color on. Not that it hugely matters. The colors do, the standing up, stamping up inks do layers. So you could do this with the same color. And there. So nobody will know that we have gilded leafing on the inside as well as some fantastic pine cones, two of which are missing. But that's okay. Two that we have work well. And there we have it. A beautiful, fun, kind of traditional. I'm not sure if the bar, the pool party is a traditional, normal kind of Christmas color, but I think it works really well with that. So where is it there? So what do you think? Does this classify as traditional colors with the balmy blue, not balmy blue, um, pool party? Or do you think it's more in between modern and traditional? Let me know in the comments. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Next week is Thursday, so I do my lives on Thursday at 10 a.m. And it'll be a little Miss Pix because she'll be on school holidays. So I'm excited to be crafting with her once again. I think I might even let her to craft. Um, it'll be the first day of their school holiday so it'll be a nice little treat for her um wishing you all the best for your christmas preparations and um see you next week bye for now <laughs>